private. Hartford, October 7, 89. Dear Joe, I had a letter from Alec Badlam day before yesterday, and in answering him I mentioned a matter which I asked him to consider a secret except to you and John McComb. As I am not ready yet to get into the newspapers, I have come near writing you about this matter several times, but it wasn't ripe and I waited. It is ripe now. It is a type setting machine which I undertook to build for the inventor for a consideration. I have been at it three years and seven months without losing a day at a cost of $3,000 a month, and in so private a way that Hartford has known nothing about it. Indeed, only a dozen men have known of the matter. I have reported progress from time to time to the proprietors of the New York Sun, Herald, Times, World, Harper Brothers, and John F. Trow, also to the proprietors of the Boston Herald and the Boston Globe. Three years ago, I asked all these people to squelch their frantic desire to load up their offices with the Mergenthaler, New York Tribune, machine, and wait for mine, and then choose between the two. They have waited, with no very gaudy patience, but still, they have waited. And I could prove to them today that they have not lost anything by it. But I reserve the proof for the present, except in the case of the New York Herald. I sent an invitation there the other day, a courtesy due a paper which ordered $240,000 worth of our machines long ago when it was still in a crude condition. The Herald has ordered its foreman to come up here next Thursday, but that is the only invitation which will go out for some time yet. The machine was finished several weeks ago and has been running ever since in the machine shop. It is a magnificent creature of steel, all of Pratt and Whitney's super best workmanship, and as nicely adjusted and as accurate as a watch. In construction, it is as elaborate and complex as that machine which it ranks next to, by every right. Man, and in performance it is as simple and sure. Anybody can set type on it who can read, and can do it after only fifteen minutes instruction. The operator does not need to leave his seat at the keyboard, for the reason that he is not required to do anything but Strike the keys and set type. Merely one function. The spacing, justifying, emptying into the galley, and distributing of dead matter is all done by the machine, without anybody's help. Four functions. The ease with which a cub can learn is surprising. Day before yesterday, I saw our newest cub set perfectly space and perfectly justify 2,150 M's of solid nonpareil in an hour and distribute the like amount in the same hour and six hours 
Previously, he had never seen the machine or its keyboard. It was a good hour's work for three-year veterans on the other typeset machines to do. We have three cubs. The dean of the trio was a school youth of eighteen. Yesterday morning, he had been an apprentice on the machine sixteen working days, eight-hour days. And we speeded him to see what he could do in an hour. In the hour, he set 5,900M solid nonpareil, and the machine perfectly spaced and justified it, and of course distributed the like amount in the same hour. Considering that a good fair compositor sets 700 and distributes 700 in the one hour, this boy did the work of about eight times the compositors in that hour. This fact sends all other typeset machines a thousand miles to the rear, and the best of them will never be heard of again after we publicly exhibit in New York. We shall put on three more cubs. We have one schoolboy and two compositors now, and we think of putting on a typewriter, a stenographer, and perhaps a shoemaker to show that no special gifts or training are required with this machine. We shall train these beginners two or three months, or until some one of them gets up to 7000 an hour. Then we will show up in New York and run the machine 24 hours a day, seven days in the week for several months to prove that this is a machine which will never get out of order or cause delay and can stand anything an anvil can stand. You know there is no other type set in machine that can run two hours on a stretch without causing trouble and delay with its incurable caprices. We own the whole field, every inch of it, and nothing can dislodge us. Now then, above is my preachment, and here follows the reason and purpose of it. I want you to run over here, roost over the machine a week, and satisfy yourself, and then go to John P. Jones, or to whom you please and sell me a hundred thousand dollars worth of this property and take ten percent in cash or the property for your trouble. The latter, if you are wise, because the price I ask is a long way short of the value. What I call property is this. A small part of my ownership consists of a royalty of $500 on every machine marketed under the American patents. My selling terms are a permanent royalty of $1 on every American marketed machine for $1,000 cash to me in hand paid. We shan't market any fewer than 5,000 machines in 15 years. A return of fifteen thousand dollars for one thousand. A royalty is better than stock in one way. It must be paid every six months, rain or shine. It is a debt and must be paid before dividends are declared. By and by, when we become a stock company, I shall buy these royalties back for stock if I can get them for anything like reasonable terms. I have never borrowed a penny to use on the machine and never sold a penny's worth of the property until the machine was entirely finished and proven by the severest tests to be what she started out to be, perfect, permanent, and occupying the position as regards all kindred machines, which the city of Paris occupies as regards the 
canvas backs of the mercantile marine. It is my purpose to sell two hundred dollars of my royalties at the above price during the next two months and keep the other three hundred dollars. Mrs. Clemens begs Mrs. Goodman to come with you and asks pardon for not writing the message herself, which would be a pathetically welcome spectacle to me, for I have been her amanuensis for eight months now since her eyes failed her. Yours as always, Mark.